Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you missed Penn and Teller getting fooled. Don't worry, you might see it happen again right now. In the late 1960s, I was in college doing magic to amuse, amaze, and astound. It was a socially turbulent time, and I became disenchanted. And I didn't want to train people to believe it's enjoyable to be tricked. So I dropped out of magic, and magic was done for me. Then I heard a quote. Magic is the most honest of all professions, for a magician promises to deceive and then does so. I realized that done right, magic is actually honest. And since I had that realization, I've been a working magician for over 40 years. Magic can do anything. It's time for the classic magic of Peter Samuelson. Gentlemen, Penn, Teller, thank you so much for wearing the masks. Considering the nature of the story I'm about to tell you, you may be glad you did. <laughs> There's a very close relationship between science fiction and magic. They both rely very heavily on your sense of fantasy, the flight of your imagination. And there's a classic science fiction movie called The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, based on the book by Jack Finney. But make no mistake, this is not your father's invasion of the body snatchers. The original was 1956. Black and white, a story about aliens that descended from outer space. They emit these large pod-like creatures, six feet long, that would split open and people would start coming out of them. Start taking over a little town, replacing the inhabitants. You would always tell when someone's been taken over because they are totally emotionless. For some strange reason, this is set in Southern California. <laughs> I use kings for my little California town. Some of them are face up, they're awake, some asleep. But awake or asleep, there's nothing that could prepare this town for the horror that was about to descend into its midst. So it's a soft, sultry California evening when suddenly, out of the darkness, <laughs> Spaceship lands. The pod creature emerges from the craft. You notice the leafy shoots? You can almost imagine the pods beginning to grow. The pod creature emerges from the craft, and the first person he comes upon is a derelict lying in the gutter. He roughs him up a bit. In a moment, he's gone. This guy's just asleep in his bed. They lay a pod next to him, and in the morning, He's one of them. Somebody sees this happen, he runs to get the cops. Before he gets half a block away, they tap on the shoulders and... He's gone. This is Scarlett O'Hara. You can tell it's Scarlett, she's... gone with the wind. All these movies has a drifter. He doesn't really belong in the film. He and his little canine companion, they're just passing through town. But as he passes through town, they get him, and his little dog, too. <laughs> but they're not done. The hero and heroine, true blue and loyal up until the last minute, went in a little cave with a river running through it. You remember the river? They're tracked to the cave, and in the morning, they're gone, gone, gone. And that is the invasion of the body snatchers. No survivors, no happy Hollywood endings to shield you from this horror. No, in this one, we win. And win, and win, and win, and win, and win. And win. Hello. Hi. So you've known Penn and Teller for a long time. 
I've known them since before they were Penn and Teller. Oh. Uh, we actually met when we were, I was a, a resident magician at the Magic Townhouse in New York City. And uh, Teller, he had a job that he couldn't actually go and do someplace. And he sent me out to do it. And I, it was a, it was a humbling experience. As they were expecting Teller and I showed up. So. <laughs> Did your magic influence theirs or theirs influence yours? Well, we kind of work on parallel paths. We've both been about storytelling. But the thing that's parallel between both Penn and Teller and their magnificence and the work that I do is... I'm not asking you to believe that what I'm doing is magic. Magic is a medium. It is simply the way in which I work, the way that a painter works with paints or a poet works with words. Okay, it's time to go to the boys. Pen, tell her. Well, Peter, your theatrical style is so astonishing, and you really don't do tricks. You just tell whole stories and whole scenes and lay it all out, and it's just uh, terrific, and nobody has a more comfortable style where you're really just telling the story and the magic is happening around you. There's no sense of, uh, of card sharp or handler. It's just a sense of a beautiful science fiction story. The rising out of the book is just great. All those samples and touches that you don't get unless you've been working and working fabulously for as long as you have. It's just, you're just uh, of, the, of the list of best magicians, you're in there. And this is a version of Wild Card. Yes. And I'm not gonna speak to you in code. There's no reason to slip in little things here here and there, um, is from the late 60s. And this is the best version anyone is ever going to see with a couple of wrinkles in it that are really, really beautiful. And you are one of the greatest magicians alive. And I think that you were showing us a wonderful theatrical science fiction story. And you know that we know the tricks we do. <laughs> Absolutely. Indeed. Thank you. That's high praise. And I... I graciously accept it. Thank and you so much. And all deserved. And all deserved. Too wonderful. Thank you. The wonderful Peter Samuelson. Thank you. Coming up, we've got more magic, including a trick by Penn and Teller themselves. Don't go anywhere. Wow.